Breaking news on Seahawks today as linebacker Jordan Brooks has passed his physical and will be activated from the pup list, meaning that his return to the football field is coming very, very soon. Seahawks PR with the official announcement this morning saying Seahawks linebacker Jordan Brooks passed his physical this morning. Great news for the Seattle Seahawks, the much-anticipated return for Jordan Brooks, and this answers a lot of questions about Jordan Brooks. Remember, it was just eight months ago that he suffered this ACL injury, and we were sitting here optimistic, hoping he would be back when the season began, but realistically, that seemed unlikely, just with the track record when you talk uh, about these injuries. It's obviously not an easy thing to recover from. You bring in Devin Bush, and Devin Bush, along with Bobby Wagner, Bush was supposed to be kind of the stopgap guy of sorts until Brooks made that full recovery, but now seems like things are headed in the right direction. The Seahawks get much-needed depth at this linebacker spot. And on top of that, Brooks, in a contract year, he's got a lot to play for. You'll get a hell of an effort from Jordan Brooks this upcoming season. I think you're going to see him play at a Pro Bowl level if he's all 100% healthy, you're going to love what you see out of Jordan Brooks. What is your one-word reaction to the news of Jordan Brooks's return? My one word, I'm going to cheap. Hip, hip, hooray! Great news for the Seahawks to get Jordan Brooks back. Give me your one-word reaction and let me know. Folks, we had just recorded a video of an entire injury update from your Seattle Seahawks in training camp and in the preseason. We'll get to the other updates besides George, Jordan Brooks. There's plenty of them. We'll show you that right now here on Seahawks Today. A lot of injury updates to get to on today's show when it comes to training camp. Also, after the first preseason game, we'll go over all of it here on Seahawks Today. Let's begin at the running back position. That's where we find... Kenneth Walker III with that groin injury, and very good news for Seahawk fans that he made his return from the groin injury on Saturday in practice, in individual drills. Was not a full participant for the Seahawks, but nonetheless, Kenneth Walker did get back on the football field, so a step in the right direction as far as Kenneth Walker goes. Now, personally, I know Kenneth Walker can play. I know he knows this offense and his role where he belongs, his RB1 and everything. If I'm the Seattle Seahawks, I'm not playing him the rest of this preseason. Sit him aside, let him get fully recovered, and make sure he's ready to go week one. We have seen this running back room throughout training camp just get decimated, right? Every single running back, it seems like, has been hurt at one point or the other. Kenneth Walker with this groin issue making his return. Zach Charbonnet had the shoulder issue. He ended up coming back, and we saw him a little bit in that preseason game. Kenny McIntosh got hurt for a minute. Uh, DJ Dallas did too. So don't need any more of this. Kenneth Walker, let him come back, get fully healthy. Don't need to see him the rest of the preseason uh, as, as far as I look at it personally. But that decision, of course, is up to Pete Carroll and company. So, well... Give him a warm welcome back to Seattle and this Seahawks team. Want to send some good vibes, show some love to Kenneth Walker. So everybody watching Seahawks today right now, want you to get in that comment section and spam K9 for our favorite dog, the one and only Kenneth Walker. Show him some love, welcome him back, send some good vibes. Who knows, maybe Kenneth Walker or his family and friends are watching today's show, and we want to show them some support for our favorite Seahawks running back. Spam K9 in the comments section and give a warm welcome back to Kenneth Walker, and hopefully he stays healthy for the rest of the season. Folks, got a little challenge out there for you. Highly encourage you to share today's show. Here's what I need you to do. Click the share button uh, as you're watching this show. Select the Twitter icon and click post to Twitter. If you tag me on Twitter at Tyler Jones 5 I will give you a retweet. And for the first 10 people that retweet and follow me on Twitter, I am going to do you a solid, and I'm going to follow you back on Twitter. So you pat my back, I'll pat your back, and we all are happier. Great way to grow this channel, keep this thing going here on Seahawks Today. As the season begins and we just reached 39,000 subscribers, we want to get our content and our videos out to as many Seahawks fans as we can as we continue to 
grow this thing before football season. I believe we're going to get to 40,000 subscribers before football season starts. But we need your help. Share the video, and we certainly would appreciate it here on Seahawks Today. Next on the injury front, now known as Reek Wollen, uh, Tariq with the knee injury that he suffered a few months ago. We recall, remember he was activated last week uh, off of the uh, pup list, making his return there. But now he is active in team drills. A very good sign, a step in the right direction for Tariq Wollen uh, to get back out there and get active in those team drills. Kind of like with Kenneth Walker. Don't need to see Tariq Woolen in the preseason. We know that he's going to be one of your starting outside corners. The competition at the corner spot is not for Tariq's spot. It is for the other spot, whether it's Mike Jackson or Devin Witherspoon, trying to figure out their nickel corner situation. I'm very confident in Tariq Woolen. I know he knows this defense. We saw what he did last year, a Pro Bowl campaign, six-plus interceptions. Tariq Woolen activated, headed the right direction, all of that is very good on Tariq Woolen as far as that goes. Another injury to get to, that is Olu Oluwatimi, uh, the center, rookie center, the uh, Seahawks drafted out of Michigan. And you may recall he suffered a elbow injury in the preseason game on Thursday, but it sounds like it's just a minor injury, that Olu is okay, that he should be fine and good to go. So, that is very positive for Olu, and he's coming off a fantastic showing in his Seahawk debut on Thursday. Allowed zero pressures, and he's in a competition to win that starting center job with Evan Brown. And listen, I don't know how this center position is going to shake out, whether they start Evan Brown or Olu. We've heard that Evan Brown has the edge. You heard Pete Carroll say before that first preseason game that if the depth chart were released right then for week one, Evan Brown would be the starter. Well, Olu is certainly making a strong case for more playing time and to be that starting center. Good to see that this elbow injury isn't that big of a deal, a minor issue. He should be okay. He should be good to go to continue in this competition. Let's see him build off of what he did last week when he did not allow a single pressure on the quarterback there. Today's show is sponsored by BetUS, the exclusive sportsbook partner of Chat Sports. You go to chatsports.com slash bet, enter the promo code Seahawks125, you will get a 125% deposit bonus. Put $100 down, you get $125 to spend for free at chatsports.com slash bet, promo code Seahawks125. Odds are out already for your Seattle Seahawks taking on the Dallas Cowboys on Saturday night, and the Seahawks come in as a touchdown favorite against Dallas, the over-under at 40-and-a-half is where the line stands right now. Get your bets in now at chatsports.com slash bet. Promo code Seahawks125 for that 125% deposit bonus. Hammer the Seahawks winning, and I think I like the over, actually. I think the Seahawks uh, have an opportunity to put some points on the board and Potentially make this a shootout. We'll see. Get your bets in now. Chatsports.com slash bet. Promo code Seahawks125 for that 125% deposit bonus. Next on the list is Kay Johnson. It was just an awful scene uh, as a Kay Johnson was uh, courted off the field uh, on Thursday night in that performance. Left the game with a concussion. And obviously when you're courted off and in that situation, it's very concerning. Was it more than a concussion that happened. Obviously, a concussion is bad enough as is, but sounds like that was the only thing there. And according to Pete Carroll, we've seen that Kate Johnson is doing much better, that he's on the right track, that uh, it isn't as severe as they would have thought when the initial injury happened. So that's very good news for Kate Johnson. A scary scene on Thursday, but... Everything looks like that he's on the right track there. And now the question becomes about him making the 53-man roster. We saw Kay Johnson on the 53-man roster at points last year. Didn't start there, but obviously ended up on that 53-man roster at one point. Jake Bobo had an impressive showing. You have questions about D. Eskridge. It's very competitive for that 53-man roster. Is Kay Johnson going to be on it? Let us know what you think. Why for yes, in for no. Kay Johnson, make the Seahawks 53-man roster or not. Weigh in. Tell us what you think of the comment section. Why for yes, in for no, if there's a spot for Kay Johnson or not. 
We mentioned the Seahawks-Cowboys game coming up on Saturday night. We are going to be live for another watch party here on the channel as we'll get things going uh, around 6 o'clock Pacific time for that game. And i got to tell you, it is guaranteed to be a fantastic time. If you missed out on our last watch party, there is no need to fear because another Seahawks watch party is near as we will have a few drinks on hand. We'll entertain ourselves and hopefully you as well in Myself, Smitty, who's a lifelong Seahawk fan, we're going to go all out, balls to the walls. If you've never experienced one of our chat sports watch parties before, you are in for a tweet. Come on in, hang with us, as there's no party like a Seahawks watch party. I can guarantee you that much. And from now until kickoff, we are in a battle with the Cowboys Report in new subscribers here on the channel. We don't want to just beat the Cowboys Report on the football field, but we want to beat them off the football field as well. So, if you want to take it to the Cowboys fans, America's team, yeah, tell me about those playoff wins you got in the last 25 years. If you want to stick it to Tom Downey and the Cowboys report, subscribe to the channel. Let's win the sub battle this week. We're making some progress, but we're still behind. Got some work to do. Come on now, 12s. Subscribe now for the latest happenings in your Seattle Seahawks. Join us for the watch party. Let's beat Cowboys report. Show them who's boss. Subscribe now for free. You'll be glad you did. A few more injuries to get to. D. Eskridge with a knee injury that he suffered uh, on the opening kickoff against the Vikings on Thursday. Not uh, an ideal situation as he suffered what was described by Pete Carroll as a legit twisted knee sprain. Uh, on that opening kickoff. And it sounds like he could be out for a few weeks. And think about this. If he's out for a few weeks, that means that he's probably out the rest of the preseason. Now, I'm no doctor, but that doesn't sound like that he's likely to come back for those final two preseason games. And then you factor in the six-week suspension. If D. Eskridge stays on this roster, then it could be a long time before we see D. Eskridge in a Seahawks uniform again. That This is a long road back for D. Eskridge. And I feel like you can't talk about an injury report almost without mentioning D. Eskridge. Um, another situation here with him, it's unfortunate uh, that this sprained knee went the way it did, and now looks like we'll be potentially waiting a while for that return. And then you have to wonder, even after all of that, what is D. Eskridge's role at that point? If he recovers from the injury and then sits through the suspension, what spot do you have for him uh, at that point in time? That remains to be seen, but I don't know if you have a spot for him at that point uh, with all that being said and the other guys, the young cats that have stepped up at this point in time. John Radigan with a elbow injury. He did not practice on Saturday. Doesn't seem like it's too severe for him. Uh, According to Pete Carroll, he says he needs a few days to recover, uh, but ultimately he should be okay. Not a a serious injury for John Raddick in there. Meanwhile, uh, one more to get to before we wrap up today's show. Devin Bush uh, with a swollen knee injury, uh, and he ended up missing Saturday's practice with that swollen knee. The injury, though, uh, good news uh, on Devin Bush's front, it is considered to be a minor injury for him, so not expected to be out a very long time. He should be back uh, day-to-day, and we should see him very soon. So, uh, before we go, now that we've gone through all these injuries that have piled up uh, through the preseason in training camp, there's only a couple that seem to be lasting long-term. And and we had the positive injury news, too, with Kenneth Walker and Rick Woolman as well. Those were signs in the right direction. What's your concern level? with the Seahawks injuries right now. Where's it at? Scaled form in the comment section, 1 through 10. Let us know what you think of the injuries for your Seattle Seahawks, where your concern level is right now. One final note before we go. Unfortunate news last night as former Seahawks running back, it was announced Alex Collins has passed away at the age of 28 years old. Uh, He last played for the Seahawks uh, a couple years ago and uh, died tragically in a car accident. And the Seahawks uh, delivered this statement saying, it is with heavy hearts that we announce the passing of our beloved Alex Collins this morning. Alex was cherished by his family and friends, as well as supporters from all around the world. 
All who truly know him can attest to his drive, determination, and larger-than-life personality. We kindly request your thoughts and prayers for our family during this difficult time. We ask for privacy as we navigate through our grief. We will provide updates regarding funeral arrangements as they become available. Alex Collins, dead at the age of 28. 